everyone. Welcome back to today's episode of the Bikini and the Brain podcast. My name is Ashley Kaltwasser, and <laughs> and sitting right next to me here is my amazing coach Adam Bonilla from Team Elite Physique. Zach Cam. Whoop whoop. We have two special guests with us today. We have Sassy the Sasquatch. And we haven't named we haven't named it is. Put in the comments what you think. That's Adam's trophy. That's my he trophy won. that I that I had to purchase. <laughs> Just to get on my level. I couldn't I couldn't compete with Ashley's trophy volume, so I went and started purchasing them. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome trophy. It's though. pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, they he can be friends it's, with it's Sassy. Bumblebee. From Transformers oh, yeah. mm. is the is who he's supposed to be made out of like car parts and stuff. Oh, cool. Critical, right? Definitely. Uh, you know, when I was a child, I actually had braces that went around my head that looked something <laughs> similar. Did you really have? Yeah, at night I had to sleep with a night brace. Okay, but not a, not at school. Like, no, they wanted me to, but I'm like, f that. Wow. F that. Who does that? That's tragic. I, did, I, I mean, tragic. I guess. I guess it turned out okay though in the end. <laughs> yeah, straighten your teeth out quite well. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> I just ended up getting veneers anyway, so it was kind of a pointless, <laughs> uh, pointless three years of braces. So let's I just was, say that. You went to the story where I was going to get veneers, and I set up the appointment, and then I got scared, and I ran away. <laughs> and he ran away. I, he I just didn't away. show up, and I was like, I'm sorry, I can't do it, guys. I can't do it. He ran away. It was such a commitment. It's such a commitment, but yeah. I do regret it, because yours look great. Well, thank you. You know, I mean, I told you, though, Adam, I think it's part of the, the boy's charm. You know, your teeth aren't like uh, they're, they're young teeth. They're okay. like around teeth, you know, you know, well, it's thank part you. Of your, it's part of your character. It's, <laughs> there you go. It's all good. It's all good. I wanna, I'm going to get a good a good mouthful one day, though. Good mouthful of teeth one day. OK, like well, you know, 50 at 50. I'm getting at them. 50. Committing. Yeah, yes, there you go. <laughs> anyway, enough about these yeah. teeth. <laughs> the jumpers enough about teeth. How do we get there? Um, no, we end up on weird <laughs> places in these podcasts. Yeah, we sure do. Well, it's uh, better than the typical intro anyway. You know, the one you always do that I yeah. call you out on. <laughs> this is going to be a great this episode. Is, hey, <laughs> I've got a good episode for you today. A great topic for you today. <laughs> That's how you keep them, Ashley. That's how you keep them. Because they're all good, you know? <laughs> it just becomes generic at that point. Um, so, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit today about, um, you know, show selection and, and strategy. So, this always happens a few times per year at this point. It's it's predictable that uh, people <laughs> complain that I compete too much. <laughs> um, I'm sure you've all, all been aware of it at some point. If not, there's many YouTube videos <laughs> about it out there. Uh, just Google or uh, search on YouTube. Ashley Cotwasser steals Olympia spots. I don't know, something like that. He stole one of the 70 spots, Ashley. Stole one of the 70 spots because of me. <laughs> then they can't, they can't compete. Dream killer. Not, not enough competitors at the Olympia. It's going to be sparse. Do you think, do you, how, much, how much space do you rent for free in people's minds when you, take, when you get a win? Yeah, I don't know. It's, <laughs> um, it's interesting because... Uh, that's my favorite saying because I rent, I rent free. I live, I pay, no, what is it? I pay, I live rent free in his head or something. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case or if people just use me as an excuse to feel better about themselves, but yeah. either way. That's how it goes. A, a side topic of when this gets brought up is my show selection and why do I choose the shows that I do and why do I compete so much? So, um, you know, we're not going to get into all the drama stuff. That's unnecessary, but I think it, it, it does uh, offer a good opportunity to kind of talk about show selection, why I choose the shows I do, why I compete frequently, but also how you can choose your show selections and uh, strategies for competing because there's competitors out there that like to compete a lot like me and then some that like to do a few per year. When do you know when to stop? When do you know uh, when to keep going? So I think this is a can be a very good learning lesson for everyone out there because it's a very, you know, it's um, a question I get asked from time to time is like, what show should I do? You know, yeah. so there's many shows. There's many shows out there. And I think the cool thing about our sport and especially in the NPC division, there's shows every weekend where, you know, all over the, the country yeah. and other countries too. So there's definitely a lot of, uh, a lot of shows to choose from. So how do you pick? Yeah, exactly. And if you, sorry guys too, if you guys see me, I'm distracting, I'm going up and under the desk. It's because we got a new podcast set up here and we're getting a new, we're building a new studio. So over the next few weeks, you'll see it develop a little bit. So getting our sound right today. <laughs> so sorry if I'm running all over the place. But um, as far as show selection goes, uh, very good question and very, 
there's a lot of strategy that goes into it. So a lot of people, of course, when you're, you know, watching this podcast and watching Ashley and you're a fan of Ashley, you want to do the things that Ashley does. And I get that a lot. I get people who are like, yeah, I want to compete just as much as Ashley. I want to, I want to be like that. I want to do this. And I'm like, well, hold on a second. Let's see if you're, you're one of the people that are capable of doing that. So you have to ask yourself that too. Where do you want to get in your career? So are you trying to get to the Olympia stage and be the next, you know, top Olympian? And if that's the case, you have to look at, okay, where am I at now to do that? So Ashley has a good amount of muscle. She doesn't really need a lot more muscle, you know, maybe a pound of muscle, if any, in her shoulders at this point, not a lot, you know? So yeah, she can compete a lot and she doesn't fade that fast. She does fade, but it's not super, super fast where, you know, if she does, you know, three shows and her arms are super stringy, she doesn't get flat that quickly. She does get flat, but it takes a while. She doesn't lose muscle that easily. It does happen though. So we have to be aware of it even for her. So are you one of those people who fade pretty quickly from show to show? You know, I don't know, you know, you have to look at how you've been doing your preps, how hard you're working out with shows, how fast do you fade? Can you do as many shows? Or are you someone who is so early in your development where it doesn't actually make sense for you to compete a lot because you still need a lot more muscle? And in that case, you know, maybe only compete twice, do a show cluster and then keep going um, the next year type of thing. So it's very person by person and it's almost like a genetic genetic thing too. Yeah. I would say that and your lifestyle. Like, do you have a job that you actually have to be present for, you know, cause I know some people can't take that amount of time off work. So I think lifestyle has a lot to do with it as well. You know, having the time and resources to be able to compete. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's some of the factors. So if you are, let's, let's say you did your last show and the judges are like, Oh, you need a lot more muscle, but you keep competing. And then you're like, I want to get to the Olympia stage doesn't make a lot of sense for you to keep competing. Like I have some athletes like that who they, of course they want to get to Olympia stage or they want to be a pro or they want to at least get as far as they can. And they just don't have enough muscle yet. So I'm like, why are we competing so much? You know, it doesn't, it does, it, it's counter to the goal because every time you compete, no matter how good you are, you're going to lose a little bit of muscle. Anytime you diet really, really hard, you're going to lose a little bit of muscle. The kind of the, the accepted exchange is about 20% of the weight you lose being lean mass. Now, lean mass doesn't necessarily mean skeletal muscle tissue. Lean mass is anything that's not fat. Um, So water weight's part of that too. So it's hard to like identify how much of it's actually muscle. But if you're losing, let's say 10 pounds of prep, well, two of those pounds, if you're crushing it or lean mass, maybe one of those pounds is is actually tissue, right? So it's, you know, when you're constantly doing that, it's going to be hard for you to build all the way there. Now, It's very person by person. Some people can actually grow while in a slight deficit, but we're talking a slight deficit for most. Like Ashley, she's growing, but she's in a deficit, then she's at maintenance, and then just slightly above maintenance, then maintenance, and then a deficit for a few weeks. So it's not because she's able to maintain her body fat and and, and actually hit maintenance calories without blowing up after every show and doing all these cheats and stuff. She gets a lot more growth time than the average person who's doing a show, blowing up, then dieting hard again, and then blowing up. You know, so... A lot of it goes into it, like you said, like your lifestyle, like what is your, I guess you're not just your lifestyle, but your commitment level to, to the sport, because, um, at this point for you, it's not even about like commitment and, uh, it's just like a living motivation. You just like eat good. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, I just eat my plan. Like Mm -hmm. I just, that's how I do it. That's how I live for, you know, years now. And so, you know, if you can get there, I think, yeah, you can be in a better spot, but you gotta be honest with yourself. Is that what you want to do? Is that sound, you know, fun to you? Is that the, you know? I don't know, you know, so I think that's why we line up well too, because when I was competing, um, I always, I just, I didn't mind sticking to plan. I had no problem sticking to it. I didn't really feel like I was, mm-hmm. you know, I was never one of those people who like had to get like all this crazy food. After a show I did my first few times, and then after that, after I kind of, after I had my throw up <laughs> an accident, you know, I was like, I ate too much, I threw up. I just never wanted to do it after that. I was just like, I'm fine. I don't yeah. need to do this anymore. Yeah. And um, if you could live like that, you know, yeah, you can compete a lot more often. So I think we see a lot of people will see the the light and they'll see Ashley doing well and winning all the time and making improvements, you know, slowly while dieting the whole time. They're like, I want to do that. And I'm like, well, let's look at the other things that go into it. Let's look at this as right for you or not, because it might not be right for you. And there's nothing wrong with it if it's not right for you. And I think that that's like, sometimes people let that weigh on their head. They're like, I just can't stick to my diet perfectly all year. I can't eat great all year. I don't, I can't compete all year. I can't be in the zone like that. Who cares? That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Totally. You strike hard once a year and you're awesome once a year. Do it. That's great. You know? Yeah, totally. And, um, let me, let me just say this as well. Like 
it, it definitely isn't easy for me to compete frequently either. So I'm really good at sticking with my diet and I don't have intense cravings. I don't usually get hungry. Um, so the post show, um, food scenario isn't the hardest part of doing show to show. It's actually feeling after the, after the show worn down. And I, like I mentioned in the last podcast, the post show hangover where it takes like you a few days to kind of feel normal again after giving all your energy and emotion to show day. And sometimes I don't have the best workouts right after. So that's why it's a little tough for me is like, I, you know, the Monday when I get back from a show, it's not like I have like the best workouts. It's more like, Oh, this is like a 50% workout. I feel like tired. So that is like, I guess the most challenging part for me personally. Um, but you know, maybe other people are the opposite and maybe they have more problems with, you know, food, but can kill their workout the Monday after. So we're all, you know, all different in that sense. But I will say this. <laughs> I don't know how many times we hear, I want to compete 10 times per year. And I'm like, that's what they all say. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they all say until they get to show number two or three. And they're like, I need a break. Yeah. So it's definitely not easy. And we don't expect people to compete as much as we do. Um, but I thoroughly enjoy every aspect of it. And there are a few benefits, in my opinion, for me, uh, why I compete frequently um, that really help me out, I think, in the end. And one of those is keeping my physique in check. If I know I have a show in a month, I'm not going to let it go. I'm going to be training hard in between because I have a show coming up in a month rather than like having a show in, let's say, 10 months. It just doesn't seem as motivating. Um, I probably won't go as intense. It just kind of seems like such a faraway goal that I'm not as driven. So having a show always on the agenda keeps me so focused and motivated because I can't slack. I got a show coming up, you know? Um, so, you know, keeping me motivated and it is fun for me, honestly. I, I create the best memories and meet the coolest people um, while competing. So it really is a lot of fun. I can't imagine doing anything else right now. It just... It brings me so much joy. And when I don't compete, I get FOMO so bad. <laughs> and I just, I'm like, dang, I'm bored. I want to compete. It's hard to keep me off stage. I mean, we do obviously uh, hold me back for some scenarios where, you know, I need to uh, recover and, and rebuild. But I, it's hard to keep me from the stage. Yeah. I just love it so much. I feel like Cinderella, you know, I get this cool life where I get to compete wherever I want whenever I want, I call the shots. Like there's nothing in my life holding me back. And I will say that's one advantage for me is like, you know, how we talked about lifestyle uh, a few minutes ago. I do have like the lifestyle to accommodate to that. Like literally, and this has happened for, I've told you like I could go, if I wanted to go to a different country, like tomorrow, I could totally do that. Doesn't Nothing's holding me back. Yeah, I don't have, it's happened before. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I've got, I've gotten asked um, to go to Korea for a seminar with like 24 hour notice to get on a plane and just <laughs> give a seminar in Korea. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I did it, you know? So I do have that, that lifestyle where I can do that. I don't have like a, a nine to five job. Um, I do, you know, I can do check-ins on my own time, which is nice. Um, I don't have family or even pets holding me back. So I don't have like a lot of, a lot of those things that would typically hold people back. And if I'm being hundred percent honest, everything I do that involves with competing, I don't pay for, I don't pay for travel. I don't pay for hotel. I don't pay for suit. I don't pay for tan, nothing. So that is a plus to me. There is no financial thing that's holding me back from competing. So a lot of times I'm just like, why the heck not? Let's yeah. create some more memories. Have a good time, you know? Um, and I think I think people do forget that this is a sport, yeah. you know? And it's just with, with any sport, you know, your run as an athlete, you never know when that's going to come exactly. to an end. Exactly, exactly. Like, you know, you're one ankle injury away, one torn hamstring away, whatever, from it mm -hmm. being done. So while you have it, and that's why I'm always like these football players that start making millions and they get like a motorcycle. And I'm like, wait till you're retired. <laughs> like, yeah. and then you see him crash. Like, what was he thinking? I'm like, I don't know who wasn't in his corner telling him, but that's why I'm always in Ashley's ear. And I'm like, like when she does cartwheels and stuff, I'm like, cartwheel. stop 
stop doing the cartwheel. It's a cartwheel. It's a <laughs> handstand. That's what she says. And then that's why I'm always like, you're just one. You know, I grew up playing hockey, so I've seen it. You know, like I think that's a little different. Yeah, it's different. But you, <laughs> you know, you'll see this kid with this huge future, and then he, you know, playing a, a pickup game and going too hard, and then he injures himself for life, and you're like, man, he would have been probably an NHL guy, no problem. So like. Um, so yeah, you just always, you always want to take advantage of it. You don't know how long your time's going to be. And I think that that's, you have a really good understanding of that Absolutely. too. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, Hey, I, I don't want to look back when I could have competed 10 times and only have done it twice oh, a year. Yeah, definitely. You know? I'm not, I'm, I think that same way. I'm just like, I don't want to live life and then, and then look back on it and be like, what it could have, should I should have yeah. competed more, you know, but I didn't because. People tell me not to like, or something like that. I'm like, you know what? If I'm happy doing it and I'm healthy and I love it, why not? Why not? Just go for it. Do all the crazy things. Freaking live life to the fullest. Cause like you said, you never know when something's going to hold you back. I mean, a perfect example uh, in 2020, when I had the eye surgery that put me out for a while, yeah. you know, and Thank gosh, it was only a few months where I wasn't able to like get on stage or, you know, the recovery was a long time, let's be honest, but thank God it wasn't longer because it could have been, you know, it could be anything really. So, you know, listen to your body for sure. Pay attention, make sure you're, you're staying healthy and if you feel good and injury free. Um, but luckily for me, I'm not, I, I'm happy. I'm healthy. No injuries right now. Hopefully it stays that way. But I do realize the position I'm in. I'm in a very unique position. So taking advantage of that um, while I can. Why the heck not, yeah. you know? Um, but I think there's also some other advantages of competing frequently. And one of them being is, like, I get to try new looks, new posing, and even, like, suits and hair. I get to try that and kind of perfect it before I step on the big stage like the Olympia, right? Mm -hmm. So some people don't even notice these little changes that I make from show to show. Uh, but I like to experiment with like, let's say a different suit color or a different little routine step thing. It's like, I'd rather try them at a show that's not the Olympia, right? I don't want to try new things at the Olympia. I want to kind of just perfect it throughout the year and just bring my best to Olympia stage, which is, you know, I call it the final exam, <laughs> the final exam of the year. Um, so being able to kind of experiment with all these things, I think is an advantage. And that could be applied to you guys too, like for nationals, for example. So if you love competing and you want to perfect your look for nationals, do it. It's better to do it at a local show than, than nationals, right? Yeah. You don't want to try new things there. And you might not work, it might not work out for you. Um, but also uh, getting feedback from multiple judges and being in front of multiple judges is definitely helpful. So every judge will give you feedback and maybe their feedback or opinion is a little different from the others. And maybe they'll bring uh, about a point that no one has yet. And you know, it's happened before. Different feedback from different judges is super helpful. So having different eyes on you and and getting critiques is just like priceless. You get to get all the, all the feedback, yeah, and which like, helps. And one of the things that um, she was mentioning too earlier was about look, trying different looks. And I think that's something that I, I'm big on and, you know, finding the perfect bikini look for a specific physique is difficult because bikini is so unique in the, in the way that it's, it's basically art, you know, it's art with a body because it's so different. And if you look at even just the last show last weekend and the last, the Las Vegas show that you did, the bodies were so different like all the way through. And it's, and if you look at bodybuilding, they're not, you know, you have smaller waistlines, bigger waistlines, a little bit leaner. Um, but everyone should be as lean as possible in bodybuilding. Everyone should be as big as possible, as symmetrical as possible. There's like this given criteria and in bikini, it really doesn't have, it has a kind of a base, but it doesn't have like a given criteria. Otherwise it would be the leanest, most muscular, most symmetrical girl would win every time. And that but, would be bodybuilding. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it has its own art form to it. And so that's why I like it because it's really challenging on your eye and it, it really separates. It really forces a separation of like the coaches of who's artistic and who's not the eyeball, you know, like they're just, is it, can they see it, you know? And it's, it takes so long to develop it where it's like, and it's just, you know, it's funny because as the farther I go, the real, more I realize like I still need to train it more and more and more. But before I thought it was so good, you know, and that's usually how it goes. Like the, the worse you are, the better you think you are, the better you get, the worse you think you are type of thing. And it's funny is that like, even yesterday's, um, like yesterday's show, the winner, I was like, oh, that girl clearly wins. Like there's no, there's no chance she will not get a perfect score in this show. And I like posted on it and everyone was like, why do you think she's got a perfect score? And I'm like, you can't see it. It's like obvious, you know? And, um, but a lot of people, I was like, oh yeah, they just don't get it. Right. They don't see it. Mm -hmm. 
But to find that look, which works good for her, right? Because you could have been leaner, you could have been more muscular, you could have been pushed in all these different directions. Mm -hmm. How did it work? Well, you had to like take time and find out how to sculpt this piece of art to be like that, right? And Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, you could look at uh, a Jennifer Dory who's a a little bit softer and Mm -hmm. you could look at Laura Lee when she was a little bit softer a few years ago. She's harder now, Um, but she was doing really well then. And so like everyone has their own look. Ashley has to be hard, right? So like you find what works for Mm -hmm. your specific body type and it's not going to be necessarily what you like unfortunately you know you can't just say i want to be lean and hard and and the more athletic type like ashley um it might not work for you it might not work very well for you at all so um you know we have to find what works really good for your specific body type and your structure and your beauty flow and all that um and that's why i like doing the smaller shows too and competing more often because you can really try things and we're we're talking earlier before this uh, podcast about like the more recent shows. Um, and, and there was a girl who actually did really good. And then she, she slipped a little bit. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually, I think it's cool that she slipped a little bit because she tried something new. Yeah. Like she really went for it. Yeah. And um, you never know till you try. You yeah. never know. And so at these, at these, you know, as a pro, unfortunately, you don't get that. Like, it's kind of a big stage. No matter what, it's always yeah. a big stage. So it yeah. kind of sucks. So but it's not it. the Olympia stage is, yeah. guess, what we're trying to say. Yeah. You definitely don't want to be like trying generally new, anything yeah. new. Yeah. Do what's been working. Exactly. <laughs> and just like you said, like everyone looks better at a different like body fat percentage or, you know, so that some people carry it a lot better than others. There's no like set, oh, bikini competitor should be 14% body fat. No, yeah. some people are. Some of them are, some of them are leaner than that. Some of them are softer. Yeah. So you can't say because this girl has this body fat amount, that it will look good on you. Not the case. Yeah. So, so it can be very deceiving. So it's definitely like every time you step on that stage, you know, is a, it's an experiment too. It's yeah. like, you know, we're even trying peak week stuff differently from, from show to show as well. Like, let's see what my body looks like if I carve up two days before instead of five days before, you know different things. So we're always just like taking notes and just being very, uh, studious of, of, you know, how the show goes. And of course the feedback, like I mentioned to you, um, and another thing to consider as well is, you know, there is no better practice than the stage for posing and just confidence in general. You can pose in front of your coach all day. You can pose in front of an iPhone all day. It is a totally different ball game when you step on stage because of nerves. Nerves kick in, okay? And that can drastically change how your routine goes. You might have killed your posing routine in front of an iPhone last night before the show, and then you get on stage and you get the nerves, you get the jitters, and it doesn't look anything like it, anything. And I will say, and not that I have like, I'm not the best poser still, but it's come a long way from competing so much. So I can get more confident and uh, be very, it, it's like, okay, this is nothing new. I'm on stage and, and I still get nervous, honestly. And I always tell girls, it's okay to be nervous because it shows you care. If you didn't get nervous, honestly, it's kind of like, well, you know, maybe you don't care as much, I guess. Yeah. Everyone gets nervous. Everyone at the top gets nervous. I promise you that. Because like I said, if you didn't care, you wouldn't get nervous. You'd just be like, whatever, <laughs> just another day. Yeah. <sighs> Let's get this over with, you know, I'm not nervous, but everyone gets that, you know, a little adrenaline, a little nervous. So how you cope with it, it, it definitely helps being comfortable on stage at least. So you can still be nervous and comfortable, right? You can totally do that. But I think that comes from just experience on the stage and that the posing it has in the past been not my strong point at all. And it was definitely something that we realized we needed to work on big time. So a lot of that came through competing often. Yeah. And they're saying positive things about your posing now, which is really cool. It's good. It's so, it's so nice to hear that feedback because it's like, because it was something that they were stuck on for a while. And now they're like, she's posing pretty good. Everyone's like, she's posing probably like, thank you. (laughs) And I think too, is something to note is like, there wasn't necessarily anything specific they mentioned with posing other than like confidence, confidence. You got to look more confident. Like, well, how do you look confident? So it's like one of those things. It's like, you can't necessarily teach it, but it definitely came from stepping on stage so many times this year. So yeah. And yeah, Derek gave me good feedback about you saying she's posing more confident. She's posing good. What have you done? I was like, (laughs) she just, she's just feeling it. I don't know. I mean, she's feeling it now. I competed uh, 11 times so far this year. So last year I competed 14 this year, 11. Um, so I definitely think through these past two years, 
doing that so often has helped. I mean, if you remember the first show um, of 2021, uh, The Clash, <laughs> I was the worst poser like on that show. That was the show that I tried to do new things. Yeah. And I we bla- realized, it blanked completely. We realized we can't do more than one small Oh yeah. Change so in a exactly. Posing. So yeah. when I do adjust things on my posing, it, it we learned it has to be like one thing she at was a time. Flowing before she left too. Like she had it down. Yeah. And then <laughs> it's like one of those scenarios I just said like it hey, when I before before I hit the stage, it was good routine, but when I got on stage, I blanked. Like, I forgot it completely. And the stage had the, the, yeah. the little crooked, right? You yeah. know, like, yeah, and that's another thing, too. Hey, posing on different surfaces, Yeah, that's that's something you need to do. But, um, yeah, that just goes to show you, like, I learned on that show, my first show of last year of 2021, whoa, definitely need to uh, practice more and uh, maybe not change too many things at once with the posing routine because I might blank and forget it all and just look like I'm – it's my first show ever on stage, so learning lesson. But yeah. every show comes with a learning lesson. That's the thing. Even if I win a show, I still learn from it. There's always a lesson to be learned, and there's always something I can improve on. And I will study photos. I will study videos after every show, and I'm like, oh, I could do this better. I can do that better, you know? Even at my best look, I guess, in, at the Arnold a few weeks ago, even though that was my best look, we still saw things we can fix. Yeah. I'm like, well, my abs are getting a little out of control. Need to stop training abs. Okay. Noted. <laughs> um, you know, things like that. So it's just, you know, we're always taking notes. And this is all like, it's super valuable information every show, no matter the size. Always learn from it. Yeah. You know, it's um, even like a small note we learned at the, uh, the, the muscle contest show was they had a, their stage was like evenly placed. And then down the middle, they had the tape line mm-hmm. to walk directly into the box. And there were so many girls like in the crack like of those, that stage. Cause yeah. they put the line like right on the middle, which is the direct middle of the stage. But everyone kind of kept like a little bit slipping on the stage. So I just learned even on that one, if you ever see those stages where the crack is down the, the same line, just yeah. be off the line, like little yeah. tiny things like that, that you wouldn't realize. But yeah, you're, there was a lot of girls like getting in that middle groove. Right. And so, yeah, just, walk like literally six inches on the outside of that yeah. straight line and you're fine. Like, so like all these little things that you learn throughout the, throughout the, the shows, like your stage IQ goes up and you just, you're prepared for it. See, there's nothing yeah. that's going to surprise you. Um, but I, I like, I like that you're open to trying new things too. Definitely. Um, because it does come with a lot of eyes when you compete, you know, mm-hmm. it, it does kind of suck. It, the one thing I'll say about Ashley, it does suck when, when she competes because she competes 11 times in a year. You, you already know you're not going to be able to win all 11 times. Yeah. Like it's just, it's bikini, you know? If it was Rami competing 11 times, he could probably win all 11 bodybuilding shows. He's the biggest, leanest, most symmetrical guy. But in bikini, you have all these variance factors, and they just might like someone else better that day in bikini. It's just how it is. So when all these eyes are on Ashley, it's like when she wins, they're like, oh, of course she won. She's got like 30 wins. But if she loses, it's like, oh, she's slipping. <laughs> like all this, this girl beat her. She's going to win the Olympia. It was like, whoa, dude, it's, you realize she competed 20 times this year, right? <laughs> like she's going to lose one of them. Like we're not going to be 100 percent every time. Right. So it is. You do well with the pressure, though. Oh, you. Hit something. What did I do? <laughs> you hit oh something. my god. <laughs> sorry, guys. My foot pressed. That was a perfect timing for, for that. Halloween. For like the. It was Halloween. I'm and sorry. I about. thought you did that. <laughs> I didn't know it was right underneath my foot. My apologies. Uh, <laughs> we're we're getting new used to the new setup. Yeah, the new setup sorry. here. But um, <laughs> along with that, you've been able to deal with like the all the pressure of everything that comes better too, which is which is yeah, great. Um, yeah. So okay, w- along with competing, okay, so let's we've got it down to you got to figure out if you're the your body type will work for it. You got to feel you got to figure out if you have enough muscle to actually do this. But you also got to figure out do I do I lose muscle every time I'm in prep? Um, you got to figure out how good your off season is if you want to compete all the time and how much balance you actually want in life, or do you just like living the prep life like mm-hmm. Ashley does? Um, what else uh, we're, we're drawing up all these notes for someone to take notes if, oh, if they want to compete that the often. summary of uh, the lifestyle, financial, financial, et cetera, et cetera, like commitments, you know, cause I realize not everyone's going to have the lifestyle. Like I do. I'm a free bird. I'm very much a free bird. I can yeah. do whatever I want whenever I want at a moment's notice. You know, and it's amazing. I'll get to as a coach, um, someone who like, maybe they got married in the last year or two and they're like, yeah, we're going to plan on having kids in the next two mm-hmm. years. I want to get to the Olympia before or something like that. I get that often. So in that scenario, you're basically rushing to do as many shows as you can yeah. too. So you have that. Uh, I'm trying to think of any of these other ones where it would make sense. But what, what I would say 
I think the biggest, most important one is, is that if you do not have your frame ready, like pro card ready yet, you don't have enough pro card ready muscle yet, you shouldn't probably be competing that often unless you're one of the few people who can live like Ashley and then can get better from show to show and you don't lose a lot of muscle from show to show. Or maybe in the rare scenario, they have too much muscle and it's okay if they flatten out and it's okay if they get smaller because there are people out there like that. There are. And maybe you're one that just, you know, maybe needs to get leaner every show. In that case, competing show to show, (laughs) you'll get leaner for sure. Um, You know, so I think like it's something you have to assess yourself. But I do want to make one thing clear. I'm telling you guys, This is what everyone says. They want to compete that often until they're in it. So my suggestion is don't go ahead and sign up for every single show until you finish the next one. Give yourself a few days to marinate on the idea of competing again and win because a lot of times, you know, people are are so excited in the moment and they sign up for all these shows and pay all the entry fees. And then when it gets down to it, they're like, oh my God, I regret this. I just need a break. And I think that happens more often than not, because like I said, that's what everyone says. Everyone says they want to compete 10 times a year. How many people actually do? It's pretty rare. Minimal, very minimal. But you know, something as well, I think an advantage of competing often as an amateur, especially is, you know, I think there's this idea that, okay, so let's say we have a pretty competitive NPC compete bikini competitor. They think that they're just going to roll into their first national show, get that pro card, go to the pro league get a pro win, go to Olympia. Mm-mm. It typically takes several national shows, usually, um, even for a good NPC bikini competitor to get the pro card. You know, it's usually not a one and done scenario. So if you're somebody that wants to get your pro card, just prepare yourself to do multiple national shows, okay? And plan them out accordingly, okay? Some some competitors do every national show just so they can get their pro card. Some people, it takes years of doing every national show to get their pro card. But don't, <laughs> I don't want you guys to think that it's um, normal to just go into your first national show and, and get it. Usually not the case. Does it happen? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. And that's great. But usually not. <laughs> usually not. Yeah. So the more chances, the better, I guess, of getting a pro card. I had a girl go nine times nine yeah. times once and she won quite a few of them but it was back when you had to get the overall and so that was pretty disheartening like yeah. because she would win and then not win the overall and then win always so close and not get the overall and we we're like yeah it was like and then she was a tall girl so it was like it was like oh she's just not gonna win the overall because she's we started thinking oh maybe she's just too tall you know yeah. like because she was she was pretty tall and so um, but then she ended up winning it. Uh, what, what sucks is she won and then she slipped like her eighth show her eighth national show she slipped and she actually didn't even get top five, but she was winning before that. And she's like, I'm just done. I'm just done. And then she did one more and then won the overall and then got a pro card. And yeah. And so it's pretty cool to, to, you know, it's, and she had a great physique the whole time I and mean, she was winning national shows, you know, mm-hmm. but you know, that back in the day, just so you guys know, you didn't win and automatically get a pro card. You had to win overalls. Um, it was a lot smaller back then though. So yeah. a lot fun different. fact, I won the overall <laughs> so Arnold bad. amateur in 2020, 2012, I won the overall Arnold amateur and I didn't even get a pro card <laughs> and, and everyone around her did. Yes. Because back, back then they had a different, um, system for this. And if you were from a different country, you could petition to get your pro card because their chances were less because they didn't have the, all the shows we have in the USA, which is fair. Um, but it was kind of like disappointing because all the girls from different countries that I beat in the overall, like we're talking different height classes, I beat them in the overall, but they got their pro card that show because they petitioned for it, but I couldn't because I was American. I was like, ah, but I got it later in the year, but it did take me a few national shows just for the record to get that pro card. So even for me, I didn't just roll into my first national show and just get a pro card. Like everyone thinks it's going to happen. Like, oh, I'm just going to do a national show this year and get that pro card. Sometimes, but often, no. That's yeah. not how it works usually. Yeah, back in the day, we used to petition overseas people for pro yeah. cards, and it was it was actually like a strategy. Is so now it's harder to get a pro card overseas because there's like only the overall or only top two or a top three in the overall will get a pro card. Yeah. But before it was a lot. It was actually a lot easier. People, it was kind of crazy because what you would do is you would just get a string of local shows for a girl and then put them on a resume, and you'd be like, yeah, she did ten local shows and won all you know won seven of them, eight of them. Like, oh, she's, you know, you could submit. You could usually get it with something like that. You could mm-hmm. usually get the pro card. But it's so much easier to win a local show than it is to win 
uh, overall at like an Olympia amateur. It's so yeah. much easier. Yeah. So you would, it was, it was funny cause you, there's always like a strategy, you know, of like yeah. where, where should we go? What national show what should we do? How are we going to do it? Oh, let's pick the small shows in, in the NPC, like out in that area or that type of thing. And it's always like, it's just, everything changes throughout the years of how you're going to strategize to get pro cards or pro wins mm -hmm. or whatever. It's so funny uh, yeah. <laughs> how it goes with you. And I will, we'll talk about it just, just briefly. Because people will talk about the shows you pick. With, oh, gosh. <laughs> with, they'll be like, oh, she needs to do, like, she doesn't compete in tier one shows. And I'm like, she competes <laughs> in almost all the tier one shows, but she also competes yeah, in the other shows. <laughs> try to use that, like, as an excuse, like, oh, she only picks small shows. I'm like, no, no, no. I pick all kinds of shows. I do not discriminate. That's for yeah. sure. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm above anyone. Like, oh, I'm too good for this show. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this little yeah. show, psh, because let me tell you something, although a show might be small, there is no such thing as an easy show in the pro league. No such thing. I never walk into any kind of show thinking, oh, I got this. Oh, just yeah. another day. Yeah. Like people think that. Like people think I'm just doing it to like get an easy W. No, there is no such thing as an easy W. And let me tell you something. I, even at these quote small shows, I've gotten worked worked okay and sometimes these small shows are more competitive than the big shows and yeah. there was a few big shows that i didn't compete in but um they were not even as competitive as some of the small shows i did yeah. this year okay and it's funny because like here's the thing i don't even think people even know what shows are tier rated or i don't think people are that on it right um otherwise they might be surprised but this like this happened last year, for example. Um, I think it was like the Tampa Pro where uh, some of the top Olympians, like really good competitors, just randomly did Tampa. Yeah, it was like three or four. Yeah, right now, yeah. and then I I didn't have any plans on doing Tampa. It wasn't even on my radar. Like, I you know I I'd prefer not to go to the East Coast more <laughs> sometimes. But I think it was in between shows. I had another show on the agenda. Anyway, it didn't line up with my schedule. I just didn't want to do it. It had no plans to. But when the list came out, people were like, why aren't you competing here, Ashley? Are you trying to avoid big shows? I'm like, <laughs> how am I supposed to know these girls are going to compete here? Like, like, listen, as an athlete, I don't know who's competing until maybe athlete check-ins the night before or when I see the list. But at that point, it's too late. Like, what What do you want me to yeah, do? Jump like, on a plane and be like, oh, my gosh, I saw somebody on the list. I got to go and, and target them. And, oh, yeah. it's going to be a show. Oh, I got to do it now. Like, no, no, no. There's no, like, group chat. There's no. Like, <laughs> we don't <laughs> like know. This. We don't know. It comes out on Monday, and then the show's on Saturday. Usually the list comes out on Monday is when everyone kind of finds out. <gasps> and then it's like, what are you going to do, a five-day prep just to challenge like, the best in the world? Oh, yeah, good luck. Yeah, like, dude, <laughs> it's like, it's, and I'm not sitting there stalking other people's page and being like, oh, what's this person going to do? I got to follow them. I will never target a person. Yeah. I No offense. I don't care who's doing it. I don't, I'm not going to go and make an effort to compete against a certain competitor. That's not how I roll. I don't target anyone. Like I really don't. I just stay in my own lane, do my own thing. I'm not out to get anybody. Yeah. I really am not. Well, most of even <laughs> the top pros don't really announce when they're doing it until it's too close anyway. Yeah. Like they might announce it two weeks out yeah. or something. And it's or like, even jump on the, the, the show late. A lot of people do that too. Yeah. Like, what do you want me to do, man? It's crazy. Good example of that too was that show in Minnesota. There was like six girls on the uh -huh. list and then there ended up being like 11 or 12 yeah. that competed. Like, so it Doubled. came out. Yeah. It came out on Monday with like six and then top people jumped into it. Not top people, but people who've won shows before. And then they ended up getting worked in that show. Yeah. Like, yeah, there was like a girl who got like fifth or sixth who's won pro shows before. I think targeting that easier show, yeah. which looked like an easy show. Yeah. And like barely got like top five or six, something like that. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, there's no such thing as easy there shows. There is like, you no can't such thing. Pick, and and even can't. the tier system isn't 100% like guaranteed a big show and big and not big show. Because if we're yeah. looking at that, technically the Toronto Pro Show is a higher tier show. Yeah. But- it was probably the smallest show I've competed in this year, honestly. Yeah. So you can't look at a tier show and be like, oh, that's an easy one. I'm going to do it that. No, there is no such thing as an easy show. And <laughs> I'll tell you, even at this point, it's rare for there not to be Olympia qualified competitors at any show. Yeah, there's, there's 60 plus girls qualified. So they're going to come. You're yeah. going to run into two or three of them yeah, at least at a show. Definitely. Yeah. And, and a few of these lower tier shows I've competed against Olympia champions at, at these quote, small shows. Yeah. I've competed against uh, people that's also won the Olympia. Are you going to say that's 
an easy show too. Like, and, and it's funny because other Olympia champions and other um, high placing, like top five, top 10 Olympia competitors compete at these quote small shows too, but no one says anything. Like, it's just, I think it's just, you know, they don't like that I do them so frequently, <laughs> you know, and, and there's other pros that compete more than I do that are already Olympic qualified. Believe it or not, there is one that competes way more than me. Um, so it's not, it's just like silly that people try to like frame it. Like I'm purposely doing the small shows in reality. There's many reasons why I would pick a show. Um, you know, like, like I mentioned, it's a lot of good practice getting in front of different judges. Geographical refining, too. Yeah. Geographical convenience. Like, yeah. Are you surprised I'm, I competed at the Nevada State when yeah. it's like, what, six minutes away from where we're yeah. actually doing this podcast right now? I, I would, any, anyone trying to avoid Ashley should probably avoid Nevada. Like I've done gonna, every <laughs> Las Vegas pro bikini show this year. Yeah, like, Are you surprised? Yeah, it's like, Why wouldn't I do it? <laughs> Why wouldn't I it's do like, it? It's like, oh, shocker. She showed up to check-ins. I'm like, yeah, what? she lives down the street. Our prep center is like 12 minutes from Alexis Park. It's like, yeah, like, or it's like, yeah, it's, I think it's like, no, it's even closer. I think it's eight minutes away. Like I rode my scooter there once. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it's, we're, yeah, we're going to be there. Yeah, I mean, gosh. 90% chance. We're you gonna know, it's show. like, it's so <laughs> silly because people will try to like find every excuse to try to frame it. Like I only do small shows. Like, you know, just forget that I did the Arnold, uh, UK a few weeks ago. Let's forget that. Let's forget I did Pittsburgh Pro Show. Let's forget I did Arnold Classic. Let's forget I did New York Pro last year and Pittsburgh Pro last year. Let's forget all that and just focus on, oh, she only competes in small shows. And it's like, <laughs> there is no such thing as an easy show. Let me tell you. Well, the thing is you compete no so thing. often, there's not even enough tier one shows to fill the amount of competing you do. You know, so yeah. it's not like it would even, there's no possible way you couldn't, you could only do pro tier one shows with how often yeah, you compete. Yeah, there's it's not, not yeah, there's not an Arnold classic every weekend. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. assure you that. So, it's, so what am I supposed to do? Just like not compete, not compete in, yeah. in between like big shows? Like, come on, well, man. You know what's funny is if you did, you know what would happen. They would be like, oh, she's she's injured or her her something. Like it would be, if you slowed down, there would be a problem. It would be oh, a problem yeah. too. They'd be like, oh, she's, she's dealing off. with health issues or she's got, you know, it'd be like, it would instantly, like, there's no, there's no way to appease people. So like, if just a good one for you guys, like, just, just be happy that they're talking about you. That's what yeah, I always say. Of so, course. Hey, you like, know, when the problem, the real problem is when they're not talking about you. Oh no, I get, I get, I, it's, honestly, it's like an honor. Like yeah. I get, I, it's a compliment. Like, thank you for, for that. I mean, <laughs> I think, you know, it, it's funny because people will use the stupidest analogies too, but it's like, Ashley, it's, uh, it's like, it's like LeBron James competing against high schoolers. Like, come on, you yeah. need to be like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like, that's so dumb. There is no junior varsity pro league. It's you're either a pro or you're not. There's no levels of, of like pro, like you are, or you're not stop trying to make it sound like I'm picking on the small people or something because <laughs> I don't go into any show thinking, Oh, you're this. I've never heard of anybody here. Let's, you know, no, everyone's a threat. Everyone's yeah. a threat. And especially these new the rookies, are the the rookies cause you don't know what they're capable of. Well, that's you don't a, know. That's the thing. You never compete against them. Like you could, you know, if, if a, a rookie comes out, you never see him, you know, you have no idea what you're going yeah. against. You know, the pictures don't it's do him scary. any justice. And then, you know, and it's such an opportunity for a rookie too, because if you, you know, if you, let's say you beat Ashley, you know, it's like you're instantly a name, you know, you're instantly, you beat Ashley. It's like a huge feather in your cap, right? Which it's, it sucks because it, it is like that, but it, but you know, that, that's a huge opportunity. And I think what's cool is I've noticed that you have like the gamers and then you have the kind of the more entitled people, right? But the gamers, when you compete, they're like, oh, awesome. I really want to stand next to her and see what I look like. Like, I would love to be called out next to her to see what I'm at, where I'm actually at. And that's a gamer. That's someone with the right attitude, the winning attitude that's going to take them far. And then you have the other people who are like, oh, she's competing. Like, well, there goes my first. And I'm like, you're already, you already lost. Like, it doesn't, you can't go into it. Like, uh, you know, like, like Mike Tyson, when he was talking about when he was fighting, he's like, I would stare a guy in his eyes and I would make sure that he knew that I wasn't budging. And he's like, and as soon as he would look away for a second, I was like, I know I already got you because you're doubting yourself. And so like that, it matters, you know, it, yeah. it totally matters. So, I mean, honestly, even just like the doubt thing, it's more of like, I'm a scapegoat. Like I'm a reason, like, let's blame her for why I can't qualify. Like, listen, last weekend there were six pro shows in bikini. Like, come on now. 
Come on. <laughs> like, here's the thing. If you're planning on going to Olympia, it, just like like the scenario as an amateur, plan on doing several shows if you're even at that level, if you think you have a shot. Because it usually doesn't just, oh, I'm going to roll into this pro show, do one pro show, and that's it. No. It takes it takes, it takes takes a few, usually, you know, if you're even at that level. And let's be honest, a lot of people complaining aren't even top five competitors anyway. Yep. Like, it's just like, am I the, re- am I the reason? <laughs> I don't know about that. I think you're using me as a an excuse but you know i'm used to it like i don't want anybody going out there feeling bad for me like this is motivating honestly but yeah you it's know. funny is that <laughs> the year that it like started you only competed four times and then the next year we're like oh you thought that oh. was a lot we're gonna really go for <laughs> then it then i competed 14 times. yeah <laughs> it was you like, know? yeah it was i think yeah it was like was it when it happened it was that you were at four shows at the point where it happened i think you competed maybe a couple more times after that but then we're like okay we're gonna show you <laughs> so yeah. it was like so funny yeah i'm one of those people you tell me not to do something i'll do it more <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah i was like thank you for the extra motivation now yeah. we cracked the record and yeah, totally <laughs> and like that was like a launching board to cracking the record too yeah. like it was just like we're just gonna go for it and just yeah. see what happens you know it was so funny yeah i just i do think it is annoying though that people think that they can choose for me like what shows I should do and what I shouldn't do because you don't know the sport like you just don't understand it you don't know how it works it's not easy ever everyone's a threat I never look at anybody and like oh yeah it's gonna be an easy one Adam let's look at this never I'm ask Adam you cannot convince me I've won until I get the award at the end even even if it's the first call out of five girls and I'm in the middle against people I've never heard of you cannot convince me I've won the show until I actually take home the award. Yeah, I've told her a couple of times. I'm Everyone's like, no, a threat. A, it's a perfect score this time, like for I'll sure. Be, and, and I'll be like, like, no, we'll see. Yeah, that girl's pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so just so you know, if I ever compete against you, I never count you out. I never count anybody out. Yeah. Because I know how it was for me too. Underdogs, you know, got to be careful. <laughs> Underdogs, rookies, they're all a threat. Even it's people bikini, that haven't, man. everyone's always evolving and always changing. The sport's evolving. So I never think I have it in the bag. I never think it's easy. Just know that. I never think that, and he shows easy in the prep itself is difficult being, being and dealing with pressure and, and, and prepping for that amount and f- frequency of shows is it definitely, it's not easy guys. It's not easy. I promise you that I might make it look easy, but it's not. And you know, something I do want to mention, and I'll be honest, there is an advantage, I guess, of a smaller show. And I'm going to say it right here. And I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes it is nice to do a small show just because it is less pressure. It can be more fun. Okay. And like I've mentioned previously about the Olympia kind of being the final exam, although the Olympia is fun in its own right, because there's so much hype and excitement, it's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. And as a former bikini Olympia champion, I will forever have the burden of expectation, the burden of expectation. That's the only disadvantage of ever winning the Olympia because now anything less than first ever at any show is a disappointment or a failure. And I don't look at it that way, but other people do, unfortunately. So having those eyes on me at the Olympia, at these bigger shows, it is stressful. It is. It's a lot of pressure. And although I do feel pressure at small shows too, just for it being more of a low key environment itself in a, in a, in a venue that's more, um, close and personal rather than a big epic stage with spotlight shooting in your eyes. It is nice to just kind of be a little more low key and relaxed at shows. And those shows I actually tend to have a little more fun with just because I can, you know, relax a little bit more. Um, Whereas big shows, it is, like I said, super exciting, you know, especially if I win, it's super exciting but it's a lot of hype and a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, so much pressure. So many eyes are looking at you and even the stage is intimidating, like big stage with the spotlights and a crowd full of people. That's how it was at the Arnold UK. Oh my gosh. That was a full house spotlights, such hype, which is like I said, exciting, but fun in a different way. Gives me chills thinking about like walking into the Olympia this year. Like it's so cool because usually we'll get to go in before, you know, um, and you just see it's like, I don't know. It just feels like the Super Bowl, you know, you're like, it's so big and so grand. And you're like, every time we go there, I'm like, just enjoy the moment, Ashley. And like, you get to do this. Yeah. It's so crazy that you get to actually do this, you know, it's so cool. And I think people really don't understand how hard it is to win 
bikini shows. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it two or three wins that Jennifer has in her entire career at this point? I think it's I like I have no idea. It's somewhere. Maybe it's, it's more than that. I don't. I remember know. when she won the Olympia. It was like her. She had the Arnold and then the Olympia, and then maybe one before that was a Tampa or something. Oh, I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah, I forget. It's, it's not like I want to say it's more than that. Is it though. okay? I, I don't, don't know. Wanna, I, wanna, I love Jennifer. I don't. I don't know. It. I think it's. <laughs> I think it's not like crazy high though. It's not. It's definitely not like more than five. If uh-huh. that's what it is. So people don't understand. Like it's hard to it's hard to get wins and it's the, the pressure that comes with it. Like people just expect like these top tier girls are going to win every time. And I'm like, yeah. no, the top tier girls don't win every time. Um, even last year, Laura Lee didn't win her shows, right? She didn't win one of them, I think. Right. I'm, I'm trying to remember the stats and it's like so many things, but Issa, she doesn't win every show. You know, it's like people think, Oh, Ashley's doing another show. It's a smaller show. She's going to, she's going to win it. It's like, no, it's not how it goes. Ever. Yes. It's like, and no. the judges show no mercy. I will tell Zero. you that. <laughs> <It's> like, <no. laughs> they will not look at me and be like, Oh yeah, no. Oh yeah, you got no, 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 no. They will pick anyone apart as they should, as they should. Yeah, so it's it's not you know what you guys. You, the only pro- thing is you only you see the only tier like top five person you see competing a lot is Ashley. So like there's these expectations with it, but you don't see the rest of them competing. You know, twenty times. Issa's somewhat uh, active. She's pretty active. Yeah. But you don't see like everyone else doing you know ten shows to give themselves that opportunity to slip. It's like the big shows only, which is cool. That's how they do it. That's how they work best. How we talk about different people, different structures can do it all year long and some can't do it all year long. It's not that they're, and, and it's funny is that they don't get heat for like avoiding shows right yeah it's like, like they're never like oh well they're avoiding I'm darn like, if you do darn if you don't yeah right it's not the show they want to see you at so like you yeah, know it's, and it's, I, I you know and and sometimes there is reasons why i don't do a certain show for whatever reason too and i think i i think i mentioned it a few times on this podcast when i took like two months off because i had a judge tell me specifically ashley you actually do need to take a few months off to build up your shoulders again And I took that and I did take some time off. And in between that time, freaking, I wanted to do Chicago pro so bad. I already had my flight booked, my contract signed, everything was good to go. And then I got that news and I'm like, I probably should listen to the judge. And it's like, you know, so it's not as if I'm avoiding shows and it's not that I'm targeting anyone. I'm doing like my own thing. And just, if the show makes sense for me in that time frame, it does. If it's, if it's, convenient it works for my schedule that's great like i prefer to stay on my same time zone because it's i will say that's an advantage it's tough to go to the east coast so often or florida you know it's it's tough it really takes longer to recover from that than just going to like (laughs) nevada state which is six minutes away (laughs) much easier to recover from something that's down the road but you know i it's it's like a lot of people like to just choose shows for me and get like irritated if I don't compete there and I compete at a different spot. And, you know, like I said, I'm not targeting anyone. I'm not targeting any certain show necessarily. If it makes sense, it makes sense. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And, um, you know, it's how the body's responding at that point too. Yeah. A lot of times we don't know till like two weeks before exactly. the show. So I think, I think, and even then we don't usually decide until like the week before the show, like for sure. We're like, okay, for sure. Cause like we said, with all the pressure that comes with her being Ashley, you know, we do have to target close to 100% each time. Yeah. You know, we, we're, we're not really able to come in less than 95%, you know, so it's, it's, it's one of those things we have to be sure every, every single yeah, prep. Totally. So, it's like and every time we step on stage, it's a risk, just yeah. so you guys know, like even small shows can be, I guess, riskier than the bigger ones. Yeah. Because like, let's say I don't do well at a smaller show. Um, then it's kind of like, oh, what's happening? Yeah, what's happening? To her? Oh my gosh! We, we you we, know, <laughs> we tend to want to be in front of the judges last before the Olympia on a good note. Yes, so, exactly. Know. And yeah. and I think with my recent three shows, I left on a really good note. Yeah, I this is what I call like confidence momentum. It's good for your confidence. It's yeah. like okay, I got good feedback these last three shows. I know what I need to do for Olympia. It's good for your confidence, honestly. Um, because, you know, if, like, let's say I, if I did a string of shows and I kept doing worse and worse and worse, and the judges are saying, yeah, this is not, you know, you're not looking any better. It's not good for your confidence at that point. Maybe take a little break. Um, but I think, you know, leaving off on a really good note, three wins in a row. Yeah. Um, one being the Arnold Classic UK, which... Let me specify, was not a small show. (laughs) Okay, not a small show. Um, That's really, that's good for my confidence momentum. And I feel good. I feel much better coming into this Olympia now. And it's likely that I'm going to wait till Olympia to compete next, honestly. Just because, you know what? Did what I needed to do. 
Um, now let's build. Now, there might be an exception. We already kind of mentioned this previously. There might be a chance I'll compete a few weeks before Olympia because there was one thing we noticed. See, from all these shows, something we noticed yeah. about when I do two shows in a row. She, she gets a little bit better the second show. The she sec- tends to it, peak a little bit better. Yeah. Ideally, with a few weeks in between, I look better the second show than I did the first. Yeah. And I think maybe it's because when I get off a show, I get super motivated. I'm in the zone. and I just want to push even harder. So maybe it's a mental thing. Maybe it's something to do with my body in general. But I always look better the second show. Just like yeah. this through these three shows that I just recently did. I did the Sasquatch where I won Sassy here. Beautiful <laughs> Sassy. She yes. loves Sassy so much. I looked, <laughs> I looked okay at this show. In my opinion, I was a little soft. It wasn't my best. A little soft. At least I had some full muscles though. Yeah. Two weeks later at the Arnold, killed it. My yeah. best look to date in my opinion and your opinion yeah. too. Killed it. I got leaner. I got bubblier. That was a look. And then the third show at Nevada State, not as good as Arnold. I wasn't expecting to be. I just got off a plane and it was like a six day gap in between. It wasn't even a full seven days. It was only six days. Okay. Wasn't expecting to be my best. Obviously, it's going to be hard to top the Arnold. And then, you know, I wasn't even able to lift as much in. It was like three days in a row, four days in a row. Yeah. No I cardio was, for two weeks. I like didn't that. do any cardio in between, really. But. I, I'm not saying it looked bad, but I looked I looked probably just as lean as the Arnold, but flatter. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was like, okay, let's uh, stop it here. I was considering doing legions, but it's funny. after... We were texting. This is where it's funny, because like we were texting each other about legions. And then at the same time, we're like, we're, she was, I was like, I don't know, you're playing with fire. And then yeah. she texts me, I don't know, I'm, I'm playing, playing with, with fire. fire at this like, point. The same like exact should text. I do legions or should <laughs> I not? Because it's in arena. I was going to be there anyway. And I was, I was there this last week and just... At an expo, though, I would obviously I didn't compete at Reno. I didn't compete at Legions, but it was a consideration. But you know, after the after the show, you know, feedback was you looked great, conditioning's great, posing's great. You got a little bit flatter, but you know, still good, still yeah. really good. Um, so you know, I'm not going to continue to push it farther. If I if I got flatter at this show, knowing that there's only a week in between, I should probably okay, let's shut it down for now. So it's kind of like you know. Although I, if I, l- I would love to compete in every single show. Not even I can compete in every single show. Okay, <laughs> so the body does eventually get a little flatter. Yeah. It, although I do hang on you to hang some on good muscle. Well. Yeah. It's like you know that's when we start to fade a little yeah, it's bit. Like a, it's like a slope, I, right? It goes it goes one show is good, two show, and then the third shows tend to be below the first show. It's like usually I would say I was better at the third show than Sasquatch. Sasquatch this, was my your, worst out of the your three. usual your usual. Yeah. Peak is flatter the third time. Yeah, I got flatter, yeah. but I, I was it's leaner. It's funny. It is how it works, right? With you, you get you're a soft but full, then full and hard, then then flatter Flat but just hard. lean. Yeah. yeah, it's funny how it like right. Yeah, you like peaks like that. Yeah. yeah, not that I looked bad at the no, Nevada State. Still, I still looked really good, but n- if we're comparing to Arnold's, yeah, uh, UK, I was yeah Arnold UK yeah. was the best, peaked perfectly for that. That's what we want to bring to the Olympia stage or something similar. Um, continuing to work on this upper body, of course. Uh, but I was very happy about that look. And I've, I've talked to, the, to you guys about this. I was not only happy that I won, of course, we love to win, but um, that I made so many amazing improvements. And that's what I was most proud of, seeing my own improvements take place. Yeah. So a win is great. I love wins. They're amazing. But seeing progress is actually more rewarding for me. And, and even from past shows, like even the ones I haven't won in the past, there's been shows that I didn't win, but I was so happy about because I made an improvement and I got so giddy and excited. Like, oh my <laughs> God, did you see my shoulders in the show? Or did you see my glute tight? Oh my God. Like, so there's always something, you know, that can be a win out of any show you guys do. You just, it's about perspective, you know, just seeing your own progress, priceless, yeah. you know, just know that when you are seeing progress, that means you're on the up and up and there's still, you're, you're, you still got potential, Right. So that's promising. Seeing your own body transform, knowing like, whoa, if I looked better at this show and I made improvements, what could I do for next one? So, you know, being being constantly improved is always a plus. Yeah, and that's why I think, especially if you're early in your if you're early in your career, you know, how Ashley said, don't pick and pay for a bunch of shows. I really do think 
I run into this problem too. I'll have competitors that get excited and they want to do like five shows and they like register for all of them. I'm doing this show, this show, this show, this show. And I'm like, well, let's look at the first show. Let's look at how you did, how you do. And then if there's a lot of room to improve on, let's decide after the show and let's see how you feel after the show too. You know, don't, you don't need to be like planning five shows in yeah. a row. Cause I have, I have competitors that'll compete and I'm like, you're, you, and then maybe they did good at a small show. I'm like, you're still small to be, you know, for your goal. Like your goal is to be a pro, but you're still too small. Like, and I don't know why we're going to do five shows if the goal is actually to get a pro card. Right. So, um, so, you know, talk to your coach, let them take reins on it. Let them look at your physique after the show. I like people to have, send me their stage picks after the show. So I can really look at them and be like, okay, yeah, let's keep going. You're too, you know, you're, you're, you have a lot of muscle, so we're good. You know, we had the overall win the other day, um, the ace of stage with, uh, Brittany. And then she came in and, and I saw her pictures and I was like, Hey, let's, let's have you compete the next weekend. But she had to work because she was like so muscular. She could have done it. It was no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, in some other scenarios, I've had other girls where I'm like, yeah, you need a lot more muscle, but they already have like five shows lined up. And I'm like, well, we're not going to build any muscle for the next eight weeks now, you know, because yeah. we're doing these five shows. So it, that's not the goal, you know? Mm -hmm. So these are all things you need to take consideration. Even us, like we train certain ways knowing like, okay, if I want to do a few shows in a row, that's, this is what we got to do. And maybe do extra lift here or extra lift there, you know, and just kind of planning things out, of course, but not even me. Like I try not to plan out too far in advance. And of course there are shows that I know I'm going to do, you know, like the Olympia, you know, come on, things <laughs> like that. Arnold classic, of course, I know I want to do that because I have to, I have to sign my contracts way far in advance in comparison to these other, um, shows that you can turn it in the week of or whatever. So different scenarios for that, but not even I like to fully commit to every show that I want to do. Cause I know how it is. You get, sounds like a good idea at the time, but when it comes to it, like, maybe you're just too worn down, too exhausted, whatever reason. And maybe it's not a good idea anymore. So it's, it's smart to just kind of listen to your body and your mindset as well, because how you're thinking now might not be how you're thinking in two weeks after your show. That might not be, you might have a totally different feeling. Yeah. You might see yourself on stage and realize, whoa, I still got to improve. There's still things I got to do. I don't know if I can do it in two weeks. So, you know, there's always improvements to be made. Some people can make them in two weeks. Some people can't. If it's something like building muscle, doubt you can do that in two weeks. If it's getting leaner, yes, you can do that in two weeks. If it's improve your presentation, yeah, you could do that in two weeks. So there's different factors to consider when, you know, choosing your next show. But don't jump the gun too quickly because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, everyone says they want to compete <laughs> in 10 shows a year. The amount of people that actually do, very minimal. Very I always say this. That's what they all say, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they yeah. all say. I can't if tell you, you actually do how many entry fees have been not showed up for. Um, so just to give you like a rule of thumb, when I was super involved with like promotions and stuff like that and, and the, the competition scene, there would generally be about an 8% no show rate on entry fees because people didn't make it to the show. Yeah. I don't know what it is now. That was probably eight years ago or so. Um, so like an 8% no show. So, there, there, you know, we're talking 200 people were entering shows, 300 people were entering shows back then. So we're talking, you know, 16, 24 people not showing mm -hmm. up. So, um, yeah. And that's, it's unfortunate cause you're, that's, that's, that money's gone when you pay that entry fee. So yeah. especially if they're in multiple classes and stuff too. Yeah, Oof. yeah, exactly. And so, um, don't let that be the, the reason you're doing the show, even if your body's not ready. So what I say is, you know, you don't get the, the early bird cutoff is usually two weeks. That's usually like when the rates will go up if there's an early bird cutoff at all. And I mean, there are not even that many people doing that anymore where it used to be, and there are still some people out there doing it where if you paid your entry fees, um, more than two weeks than the show to the show, you would get like $50 off or whatever, $20 off per class or something like that. And then after it gets to the two week marker, then it would be a little bit more. So I say, you know, if they're going to do that, just wait to the two weeks and make sure you're ready. Cause there's no reason you need to pay for it three months in advance. Yeah. You know? And totally. so I, that's, I say, Hey, did, that way you're not like something happens in your life and you're, and then they're emailing the promoter. Can I, can I get my money back? I was like, no, we have like, everything's based upon how many entries we have, you know, so they're not going to, they're running a business, you know? So, mm, totally. um, so yeah, so just take that in mind. There's no discount for, for signing up, you know, before the cutoff. So just <laughs> don't commit too early. You know, you just never know what's going to happen. Definitely. So, yeah. Life has its way of just throwing curveballs at you. And yeah. sometimes your body isn't as cooperative as you'd like it to be or whatever gets sick. You never know what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. Or and if just your coach says they don't, they don't think you should, yeah, you know, at that exactly. point. Exactly. I've done it where I've said, you know, I don't see why we'd compete. You're not like you got fifth at the last show. You're not significantly going to be improved in three weeks. So let's just hang it up and work yeah. on what we need to work on. 
And then the athlete would be like, well, I already paid for this. I'm like, why did you pay for this? Like, we didn't talk about. Yeah, I think, you know, sometimes competitors do that because it's a source of motivation. Like, well, I committed to it. I got to do it. But it doesn't it doesn't always translate like that. So I would always say just train and have the mindset as if you're going to do the show. The only thing that changes is the entry fee that you turn in. Already have it in your mind. Already put it on the calendar. Everything else you typically would do except for the whole turn in your entry fee thing and um that way you don't lose any money if if life takes a, a curveball yeah, the tanning or companies don't get booked out entirely yes. like they're going to be spots for you yes. the only one the makeup does that does but that's the only really the yeah only that's one. a good point the yeah makeup's the only one saying. yeah that but the rest of them the entries are not gonna be like oh we're sorry there's we're not accepting any competitors at this point <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean even <laughs> even like if you have to stay at a hotel you can always cancel i think 48 hours ahead yeah. so that's something to consider as well so mm-hmm. just you know just be just know that your future self might have a different mindset than current okay and i've that's a learning lesson for me too believe me yeah. i'm guilty of it as well okay and it's, let me tell you something, it's much harder to get out of a contract as a pro than it is just an entry fee as an amateur. So it's, <laughs> you know, I, I never like to do it. I only have to do it or only do it when I have to for whatever reasons. And like, you know, when a judge tells me not to compete, I don't compete. And then I think the last time I pulled out of a show was my eye surgery recovery took way longer than I thought. And I had yeah. to pull out a show and I didn't feel good about it. I felt like a failure. So, <laughs> you know, life does take a toll and you just, you just got to know that things change, you know? Um, so one thing I did want to also kind of point out, and this is kind of like a me thing too, and I'm not saying this obviously applies to anybody, but one criticism I get sometimes is that I do all these shows for money. (laughs) And I don't. Okay. (laughs) I just want to put that out there too, just to clear the air. I don't compete for money. Um, I always say if they gave $20 as a prize, I'd still do it. I don't even look at the prize money at the shows. Like they have it on the IFB list. I don't even look at it. It's not a consideration. I don't do one show over and over other because it has more prize money. It's not a thing for me. And I don't need to compete to make a living for myself either. I just want to put that out there because people think I'm like this poor girl, maybe (laughs) living in my car that Adam gave me, (laughs) just trying to survive, trying to survive with these checks. And it's nice to get money from a show for sure. I'm not going to not take it, but I don't need it. It's not my main source of income. It's helpful for sure, but I don't. Maybe it's because I'm just not flashy. I'm materialistic. Yeah. Maybe think they think I'm poor. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm doing well for myself. I live a comfortable life, and there's no. Out of all the, let me just say, out of all the stresses of the world, money is not one of them for me. I'm good. I'm fine. I don't. I'm not flashy. I don't buy Lamborghinis. I'm not saying that, but. I'm good. So people that think I have to compete for money, no, I don't. I do it because I love it. I love it so much. It's so fun. And I love being a freaking fit princess for a day and putting (laughs) on my makeup and my suit and my hair and being all fitness glam. And I love it. It's so much fun. And I would not have my life any other way. I would not want to walk in anybody else's shoes but my own. I'm living the freaking dream. Living the dream. Living my best bikini life. And I encourage you all to do the same. Yeah, and I honestly, I think that that is one of the bigger reasons why you're successful too, is that you do it strictly because it's a passion, yeah. you know? And I do think that that's a commonality with the top girls. They're like, no, it's not like my main thing. Yeah. They're like, it's just, I love it. I and mean, main thing as in my main hobby, yes, but yes. main source of income, no. Correct, wow. yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think anyone could really live off of basing it off of wins, you know? They just, mm-hmm. it's, too, it's too up and down. So, um, so yeah, I think that that's awesome. And I think that that's the only way to, honestly, I think it's the only way to succeed in life, really, is to do something that you just love doing and just you that's the only way to stay motivated for so long. Yes. You know? Yeah, totally. I'm the same way with this. I'm like, you know, I can't even take vacations. I just love I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, I just am completely, utterly obsessed with it. And if I wanted to have an easy life at this point, I could just go buy an apartment complex and live off the rent. Like that's yes. not a problem, you know. So yeah. it's like, but that's that's boring. Like we're actually yeah. doing stuff and and changing the game and letting Heck people yeah. know that, hey, you can compete and still make make progress and yes. we're this like living case study yeah. that's like forever disproving all these other guys that are like oh you can't do that we're like no you can but we're explaining to you guys today you have to be the right person you have mentally to the right physically mentally, everything mentally physically mindset lifestyle yeah you know it doesn't apply to and no shame to people that can only compete twice or three times a year that's cool too yeah there's that's definitely awesome. do your thing there's definitely a 
type, you know, it's, it's not, a lot of people can't do that. You know, yeah, a lot of people just know. can't, you know, and it's like, you know, at the same time, a lot of people that can't, that say they can't, I think could, but they don't want to, and that's fine too. Um, but there are some people who actually just, they just can't, they'll just wither away. They'll get kind of skinny fat. They won't keep muscle. They'll start storing fat. Like it's, it's different people, you know, different yeah. types. And lifestyle so. too. That's yeah. a big thing. You know, I don't expect anyone to have the same lifestyle as me to have such an open and free schedule or be able to do things on my time. So I definitely realize I'm in a very unique, special position and I will take advantage of that, you know, yeah. do all I do, can do, do all the crazy things because you <laughs> only live once, you know, but you know, I think the reasons of why people compete you know, everyone has their reasons. Everyone, maybe they just want to be in the best shape of their life. Maybe they want to just do it, you know, put on a bikini for the first time in forever and just be a fit princess for a day. Maybe they just want to challenge themselves. I think we all have different reasons why we compete, but the stage just like brings us all together. Yeah. One big happy family. And it's a beautiful thing, you know? It's a beautiful thing. So if you like competing, just 10 yeah. times a year, do it. Yeah. If you like competing twice a year, do it, you know, don't let, uh, don't let outside influences, uh, outside influences, you know, determine that unless it's like your coach saying, yo, you need to stop. Yeah. You're getting too small. And I'll, I will only <laughs> say it when it's the client's goal to get like a yes. pro card. And I'm mm -hmm. like, it's not in your best interest of a pro card, but if it's like a transformation client, yeah. she just loves competing. And she's like, I don't care if I get fifth or eighth That's or whatever. Awesome. I'm like, go for it then. Yeah. I love fun. that. That's your, that. my job is to guide whatever your goal is, you know? And so, um, yeah, I have, I have athletes that'll do that too. They just want to transform. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's like their first show and then they'll surprise themselves at the end. You know, what's really yeah. funny is that you get these like transformer people, right? They're, uh, they're, that's funny. I call them trans. That's what Courtney, you know, Courtney got me saying transformers, <laughs> It's so funny, but it's transformation people, but I'm like transformers. Um, and you're like, yeah, this would be fun. And then the next thing you know, they're turning into real competitive athletes yeah. and it's like, it wasn't intended to do that. Yeah. They just wanted to get on stage. I love it. And then the next thing you know, she gets, you know, second place. She's like, I think I can get first, you know, Dude, I think that is Awesome. And so it's like, it goes that from one thing best. to another. Yeah. I always say it's one thing to meet your goal, but to exceed your goal is so much better. Yeah. So much better, which is why I always say I don't really go into shows with expectations. Um, I keep my goals realistic um, and attainable. And hey, if I exceed that goal, oh, that's just icing on the cake. Because, you know, I think a lot of, we've, we've talked about how many times People have expectations going into show. I'm going to win this show. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And when it doesn't go their way, they get discouraged. And it's a disappointment. And that's because they set their standards maybe a little too high. Listen, especially in bikini, like we just discussed, it's, uh, who knows? It's you know very volatile. You never know. What's you never funny know. is in, um, in like, in real life, you tend to have, like, the girls be more catty than the guys, right? But the in bikini, it's like so the opposite versus the men in like the sport. It's so funny because when they do these interviews at like the Olympia or these interviews, like watch all the bikini interviews, like all pretty much every single one of them ever. I think when they'll be like, "Oh, who's gonna win? Who do you think's gonna win the Arnold? You gonna win the Arnold?" And then the girls are always like, "Like it'll be like them asking Jennifer versus Ashley. Like they'll be like try to stir it up, and they'll be like, yeah. hey, Jennifer, you think that you're gonna win?'" She's like, "Well, Ashley came to win too, and everyone looks really good, and you guys should be competing to win." <laughs> like, but but the guys, you ask the guys, they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna smash him. He's not yeah, ready for this." That is <laughs> so, so funny. funny. Like the, I, the girls in bikini are all. They, no one, they never are like, I'm a killer, right? They're like, <laughs> you know, I, you will not find any interview out there for any show where it says, yeah, I'm going to win the show today. Yeah. I'm going to win. Yeah. I'm going to win. I don't ever say that. I'll say, I want to try. Hey, I brought a really good package to the stage today. It's out of my hands. Hayes in the barn. Let's see what the judges think. I might say something like yeah. that, but I will never say, yeah. Oh, I got this. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, that's a silly thing to do in my opinion, because you're going to look stupid at the end, especially in a subjective sport much like bikini. So yeah. it's like, it'd be one thing if it was a race and you're like, okay, you know, my PR is a second faster than this person. I have a pretty, you know, maybe be more comfortable saying that, but I, I it's, I, it's funny that I every year they that. always try to like stir the pot though. Yeah. And it never works. In bikini. A, the girls are always so nice. nice. They're all nice to each other. They all respect each other. They all probably like, 
call each other after like it's like it's like such a different world and the guys are like just on instagram on you could get them raw that they'll take their shirt off at the show oh they take <laughs> the bait for sure they take it for sure the girls are always like oh no she came to win too she looks great i wish her luck <laughs> it's so funny yeah. they, they never stir they never uh, get yeah. so riled up it's so awkward responding to those when like they do that. questions because it's like they want you to say yeah i'm gonna win they're like probing you to say that but you don't at least me, I don't feel comfortable saying that. I really don't. I'll well, say, I'll, I'll beat around the bush. I will not say I'm going to win, though. I will never say that. There's, there is this, uh, there's this fighter in an interview, and it was really funny because he was right. And you know how, like, in the fights, they're, like, trying to sell the fight. So they're like, oh, I'm going to smash him. He's not going to wake up. Like, they see all these just crazy things. And the guy's like, well, I can, he's like, I'm gonna, you can, I can say whatever I want, but you guys are going to see it in like a day <laughs> he's like that's so, a good point he's like so can i use that one yeah he's like he's like so it's not like some like street yard fight like he's like we're he's like we're not talking about to fight like we're going to fight we're going to find out so why would i say anything at all see like, that's the logical <laughs> he answer was, he was like that's smart he's like if i say i'm gonna smash him and he beats me i'm gonna look pretty stupid so let's just you guys yeah. are gonna find out in a day let's wait i like that <laughs> I was like see he's so right because that's these, so honest these guys who do this and they like build it all up and then they get smashed it's like yeah you look pretty foolish now <laughs> like you know it's, yeah it's funny. the, the know? girls are very smart they're very smart and strategic it's, you know you don't want that extra pressure it's extra pressure because <laughs> then they're gonna hold you to your word and like i mentioned before i already have enough pressure and eyes on me i don't need more expectation i already have the burden of expectation i don't need more i'm good you know <laughs> i need I, i'm good so i i'll keep it where where i'm at you know just uh, be subtly uh confident but uh never promising anything yes realistic i think realistic, realistic is, a, yes. is a thing so so i guess with that we have everything uh kind of wrapped up for this one I in terms did of want to mention though we have a special guest next week. Oh, yeah. Can we go ahead and announce go a for preview? It. Yes. So next week, we have a very special guest, Phoebe Hagen, who is staying with us here in Vegas. So she will be a guest on our podcast next week. And Phoebe is just like the best poser. And she has a business where she teaches posing. But we're going to talk a lot about, you know, like how to present your best and, um, you know, even just contest prep and bikini girl things, you know? Yeah. All yes. the good stuff. So she has a um, site called the Posing Portal, and that's all she does. She poses people. So we're going to go into, yeah, everything posing related. Because posing is so getting, they're getting crazy with the posing now. Oh, well, not gonna, crazy. I wish I didn't say crazy. Things are changing is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So you don't want to miss this one. You you got to be up to date on these things. Yes. Yeah. Big changes actually in the posing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's going to start. I think it's going to be like a thing at the Olympia. I hope so. so. But we're not going to give away too much now. Nope. You got to find out. You got to find out next week. So make sure you tune in. Yes. And then we're going to be doing our posing seminar coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. I don't even know when that is. You got to tell me. Once a too. month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once a month. He so didn't tell ahead. me yet. So hopefully next, uh, next we next podcast me. we'll do it next podcast next okay, podcast okay. all right cool hopefully we'll see you guys so anyway bring your send us your posing questions because i think that'd be good, good thing oh to bring yes up some for, phoebe, for, for phoebe for next week send posing questions yeah shoot them to, smart. to us through um dm dm on Instagram. or are on the comment section in the youtube oh, there videos you go. comment or, section that's better so we can we can refer to them in the yeah. next in yes. the next video yeah that would be probably the best and if you're watching on YouTube, please comment below. Any posing related questions or even just questions for Phoebe um, would be super helpful. We yeah. would appreciate that. And that is at youtube.com forward slash team elite physique. Woot. And um, with that, we'll do a real quick plug for uh, muscle egg forward slash team elite physique that helps Ashley full get full of eggs in the mornings and it helps you save money there Woo. you go what is it like 10 percent or something like that and then Ashley K fit for angel competition bikinis mm -hmm. and that is uh I think that is it right yes, yeah yes. all right so thank you guys so much we'll talk to you later bye